Greetings. I am Pearl John from Logos Management and it is my pleasure to meet with you week after week. Thank you for watching and sharing the other 167 with your friends and relatives. We continue our series on building and leaving a legacy. We transition from the life of Abraham to the life of Moses, another one of God's generals whose life was influential and impactful. Last week, we focused on principle eight. Legacy has a compounding effect beyond your lifetime. And we said that one, your faith walk brings God's blessings on the next generation a hundredfold. Two, hand of God in your life will tickle the eyes of the enemy to generate envy and fear. And three, resistance in the workplace is a sure sign of God's hand on your life. Today we move on to the ninth principle. Legacy builders are keen to find pressing problems of their people and endeavor to solve them. Legacy builders are keen to find pressing problems of their people and endeavor to solve them. Actions born out of burden may not always be the right action. Act nevertheless. Inaction is the malady of most people. To act is to exercise mind and body and act which arises out of volition. There is merit in action rather than inaction. Don't get me wrong, I'm not advocating wrong actions. What I'm saying nevertheless is to act rather than sit tight without acting in response to a need in your environment. For our meditation today, we shall consider three lessons from the life of Moses from a legacy building standpoint. One, be moved with burden for the suffering of others. Be moved with burden for the suffering of others. Identifying the need and endeavoring to address that need is the hallmark of a legacy builder. The much acclaimed Shark Tank TV series, which has business moguls funding business ideas, has one salient feature. Of all the business funding made, a significant percentage of funding was given to those who along with a brilliant business potential, had a unique need that was being serviced. When you're so moved by and burdened with the issues on the ground, when you're so sensitive to pick up the on the ground realities and needs, when you have your eyes and ears tuned in to catch the needs that are obvious and often not so obvious, and you're convinced that you need to do something about it, you begin to spell the start of a revolution of such mammoth proportions, far beyond your wildest dreams. History is replete with examples after examples of men and women who identified a need and invested their lives in pursuit of addressing that need, which turned the course of history. Abraham Lincoln identified a need to abolish slavery. Mahatma Gandhi was cognizant of the need for freedom. Martin Luther King Jr. recognized the need for equal civil rights. Nelson Mandela picked up the growing racial discrimination and the burden grew in their hearts. And the burden was the springboard of significant change. In Exodus chapter 2 verse 11, we find when Moses was grown up, he went out to his brethren and looked at their burdens. The Bible further goes on to say that he saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew, one of his brethren. What is your burden? Are you cognizant of the needs around? Are you disturbed by the growing problems in your context? Do you see your brethren mistreated, communities gripped by poverty, tribes, languishing in abject deprivation of education, healthcare or sanitation? Have you taken the time and effort to find the needs around? If you have not, perhaps today is the day to start. Secondly, burden should lead to action. Burden should lead to action. When you are burdened, and are restless by the need around and that need grows into a significant storm in your mind and takes your sleep away. It will prompt you to act. 
the acid test of a burden that is live and kicking is action. I repeat, the acid test of a burden that is live and kicking is action. Remember James 2.14, faith without action is dead. And I would dare say burden without commensurate action is doubly dead. The need around must birth a burden and the burden must beget action. Take any movement in the world. The Quit India movement led by M.K. Gandhi or the civil rights movement led by Martin Luther King Jr. or the anti-apartheid movement led by Nelson Mandela were all actions emerging from their burdens culminating from the needs they sensed in their context. In Exodus chapter 2 and verse 12, we get a glimpse of Moses' action. So he looked this way and that way and when he saw no one, he went about and killed the Egyptian and hid him away in the sand. I'm not condoning this action. However, the point is the burden birthed an action. That sense of burden when it grips you, it invariably leads to something significant, something out of the ordinary, something earth shattering. What actions has your burden birthed? Thirdly, inaction is worse than incorrect action. Act now. Moses' action when he was confronted by the injustice meted out to his people was reactive, imminent and damning. In hindsight, we know that perhaps that was not the right thing to do. Moses was one of those men who subscribed to the ethic, some action is better than no action. Inaction is the greatest malice that has hit Christendom. Often the action may be wrong, but act. Often the information may be incomplete, but use the existing information and act. Often there may be gaps in understanding all the facets of the problem, but act with whatever understanding you have. Organizations that have made significant strides in the market, in terms of market cap or brand recall, consistently bring out cutting edge products that are functional of high quality in time and do not wait for turning in the perfect versions. They operate on the premise that the versions 2 or version 3 or 4 will be better versions of the product that are improvements or improvisations of the existing product. Moses acted. Legacy builders act. Do you act in response to the burden or do you do merely lips service? Let your lip service become less of lip service and move to lipless service and birth actions that can have significant outcomes. May God grant you the grace. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for your word. We pray, Lord, that you will open our eyes to see the need around us and may those needs in turn become burdens in our hearts that will propel us to action. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for staying with us several weeks. We urge you to continue watching The Other 167. See you next week, same time, same channel. Have a great weekend.